for you? It seems like it's been a long time coming. It has. It has. You know, I'm really excited. Um, I, you know, at some time you kind of wonder whether or not it's ever going to happen, but you don't really waste very much time thinking about it when you're a coach. When you do it for the 30 years I've been doing it, eventually you just, you know that eventually your day may come. My opportunity came, and I'm, I'm planning on seizing it and, and, and taking the ball and running. Why so. do you think Birmingham is a great hot spot for this? Oh. Uh, those colleges that are around here? Those, uh, by, the, the, by the allocation of players and by the, by the way we're going to pick and put our teams together, um, I couldn't think of a, a better hotbed of, of football than this, this area in the, in the country here. We've got Alabama, we've got Auburn, we've got universities around here that uh, locally uh, that will help us uh, put our team together in a fantastic and dynamic way. And I think that's, that's the reason. I guess that's a, a me question. Uh, you know, we're, we're working on, the, on it right now. We're going to be consulting with our coaches. We have uh, seven of our coaches now named. Once we get all eight, we'll, we're, we're going to get together and talk about the allocation process. The one thing I can tell you is that we're going to have a, an allocation process that keeps local players home uh, where, where possible. So we want to do it in a fair way uh, across the country, but we also want to keep local players home. It just makes sense. With the colleges you just mentioned, how is that going to help with the fan base and just the expectations that you feel like you're going to have going into this season? I think the fan base will be excited to come to the games watching players that they know, they know the names of, they know the, the faces, they, they can relate to the guys. Um, I think it's just going to be great. It'll be a great fan experience. Uh, uh, each game, you know, when you, when you sit up in the stands with your, your family, and uh, you're, you're watching, it's the same kid that you just got done watching for two or three or four, four years at, uh, at, at the universities, uh, the local universities. I think it's going to be fantastic. When you select, when you look at your resume, when you select the players, I mean, what kind of coach are they going to get? Oh, goodness. That's a great question. <laughs> That's a great question. I, I think uh, coaches evolve over time. You know, I've gotten an opportunity to work for some of the very best. I got a chance to play for Jackie Sherrill, uh, University of Alum, uh, Alabama alum. Um, a lot of what I think he thinks. I got a chance to coach in the NFL for Bill Cowher and Tom Coughlin, some really successful coaches, Super Bowl champion coaches. Uh, I think I'm kind of a, uh, a collective of all of them. Uh, they will get a guy that is a disciplined guy. They're going to get a guy that's going to teach smart, uh, tough, fast, aggressive football. And uh, they're going to have to know what to do. You know, so I'm going uh, to, I think Justin kind of alluded to it. Uh, I think he hated me when I was uh, his rookie, <laughs> rookie coach, but I think he loves me now. And uh, he understands that I understood what was going on, and I was trying to get them in a very quickly way, a quick way to understand the urgency that they have to, to learn and, and, and get better. Because the NFL pro football doesn't wait for very many people. And um, I just, uh, I think they're going to get a, a hard-nosed coach that, that wants to get it done right. Tim, do you have a timeline of when camp opens and, you know, all that? <laughs> Generally speaking, we're, uh, our training camp will be in, uh, begin in January, uh, literally the 2nd of January, I believe. We're going to have, uh, we, ho we hope to put all eight teams in the same location for a few weeks to be able to play against each other. And then they'll, they'll go to their respective markets for the last week or two before uh, our first game. We open on CBS television February 9th, 2019 size of the roster that would be like the NFL, like 52? Well, probably 50. We'll go to camp with 75, we believe, and probably go to 50. When selecting Birmingham, how important was it that there's a new stadium coming along here? I think we liked Birmingham from the outset. I think that's, a, that's an added bonus, if you ask me, but uh, we're happy at uh, Legion Field, and, and uh, Birmingham was kind of an easy choice, just like uh, Coach Lewis was kind of an easy choice for Birmingham, really. Now, Birmingham has had six professional teams, and all of them have not seemed to do as well. What are you going to do to ensure that this league succeeds here? We're going to try to put, first and foremost, we're going to put quality football on the field. It's not going to be gimmicky. Uh, we're going to put the best players in the world that are not playing in the NFL will be playing for us, and they're going to be coached by some really good coaches. So we, we're going to try to put really good product on the field, and I think people will, people will come out. Is there anything about this current environment that maybe thinks be more successful in Birmingham than kind of previous 
iterations that have come through here? I don't know if it's the, the current environment. I think there's an appetite for it here and, and elsewhere in the country. When you look at, we looked at the number of people that watch football and then watch no other sport after, after the NFL season's over. There's a huge number, it's in 20 some million people. And uh, uh, we think there's an appetite for it. And of course, Birmingham is such a great football city. We think if we put the right product on the field and if he can go undefeated, they'll get, they'll get huge, huge crowds. <laughs> No pressure. Yeah, Mayor Woodfin alluded to that uh, in yeah. the press conference, yeah. jokingly saying we yeah. have a lot of patience here in the state for championships. I heard what that. What kind of expectations <laughs> is that set for you guys early on? Well, Coach Cower used to always tell us we have to manage our expectations. And uh, I can only assure you this, that the players will know what to do, they'll know how to do it, and we're going to do it fast. Whether we win or not, I don't know. But I know that they're going to play really hard. They're going to give you everything they've got. It's going to be a team that you guys are all going to be proud of. I can tell you that. When we take the field the very first time, they're going to look like they know what they're doing, and they're going to do it. So. We talked about where you want to get your players from, you know, local and stuff. But how about coaching staff? Like yeah. What are your plans for you know, putting together a coaching staff from guys from the league, from the college yeah. level? Yes, all of that. So I think that's a great question, and uh, I'm working through it right now. We've got uh, a number of names, of course. Uh, when 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 the news hit, of course I'm, you know I've, I've got a lot of phone calls, so there are a lot of folks out there that would like to do it. Uh, we'll wade through it, we'll work together on it, and we'll put together a, a fine staff. And it's going to be a staff again that will make you all proud. You will. Uh, I want winners. I want teachers. I want guys that can can get it done. Guys that will command the players' respect, and at the same time, have some fun. We want to have fun. We want to. We want the players to understand that we're in an alliance together with them. This is a, a players' league. It's a player-centric uh, league, and we want to. Make, we're going to involve the fans in the games. Uh, the game itself, as he already alluded to, uh, is going to be exciting, but it's not going to be gimmicky. It's going to be football, and it's going to be football 101, and we're going to have fun doing it. In your opinion, what will the goal of your players be at this league? Is it to go to the NFL? Is it to, I mean, what, what ultimately will be their goal? Well, I think it's going to be a complementary league to the NFL. I don't know that we're, we're necessarily taking players with the idea that that's where they want to go or that's what they need to do in order to be considered successful. We're going to come, uh, we're going to, they're going to be on our team if they can play football, if they can run and catch and do all the wonderful things that professional athletes do on a football team. If they get called, they get called. If they don't, they're going to enjoy their time here and they're going to play really good football and they're going to learn a lot. Now, with the announcement of the XFL in 2020, you were jumping in 2019. Is this, in a way, supposed to run maybe to kind of beat them to the punch of a new football league in America? No, not at all. Actually, uh, this this league has has nothing to do with with the other league. This is this was our business plan going forward. It has been for quite some time. In 2019 was 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 when we wanted to go. I didn't know anything about when XFL was or wasn't going to go. Um, that's that's just a separate deal that I really don't know much about. Um, um, I was involved in the old XFL years ago with the Los Angeles Extreme, but I, I have nothing to do with this one and don't know what they have planned at all. JK, it would appear that this league and the XFL are emerging now because the NFL is vulnerable. Is that fair? I, I don't think, like I said, I think we, we view our league as complementary. We're, we're going to have guys that aren't getting a shot in that league, and, and some of them will then ultimately get a shot in that league. Uh, in, in the long haul, maybe we can keep them in our league, but in, in, certainly in the short term, if they can make it, in the NFL will have an out in their contract that allows them to go there. What draft mechanism is going to be in place to allow allocation of local players? Well, we're putting that together now. It's, it's a little bit complicated, but it's, we, I, I can commit to you that we're going to keep local players home. And we want to do it fairly across the country. Uh, a lot of our coaches, frankly, Birmingham was an easy choice, and a lot of our coaches around the country were interested in Birmingham because of the, uh, because of the uh, proximity of schools like Alabama and Auburn. Um, but we're going to try to do it fairly so that everybody has a an, an equal shot, but we also want to be, be smart and keep local players at home. It seems like this area would have an advantage town-wise, considering what you're saying. Well, yeah, but you look then you look over at Orlando, and they've got they've got a lot too going for them. So we'll again we'll try to do it fairly, uh, and and there will be a draft element to it. There'll also be an allocation uh, uh, that'll relate to your, your college team. It might also relate to your NFL team. So we're trying to we're working through that and. Uh, 
my job is to try to make sure that it's a fair allocation process. Is the salary cap system, um, what's it going to be like? Is it going to be modeled after what the MLS has done? It's, we, we're working on our standard player contract right now, and it'll, 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 all the players in the league will, will sign a standard player contract. The compensation will be uh, equal throughout the league. The mascot? No, we don't have a mascot yet. We're, we're, the team names are coming up, uh, and, and we, we kind of wanted to wait. Charlie Eversol had a good idea, I think. He wanted to wait to, to get input from the from the uh, fans around here. What, what do you think? What should the name be? Um, and uh, we'll we'll look at that, and I think we'll have an announcement in that regard in the not too distant future. Logan. 